Hi, my name's Christine and in the first of a series called Do Do This at Home I'm going to show you how to paint a spring flower using watercolours. People say watercolours are a difficult medium but if you learn step by step how to harness its effects they can be a joy to work with. Today I'm going to show you how to drop colour into onto damp paper and also I'm going to show you the importance of allowing each stage of painting to dry before going on to the next stage. So you need paper obviously and watercolour paper is best because it has a relief to it which allows the paint to settle in interesting ways. If you don't have any you can use card but you will find that paper will crinkle when water is applied to it. You also need paints and this is my basic watercolour set which has served me well over the years and you'll need the lid or a separate hollow dish to mix the paints. If you don't have either of those some old saucers will do. You need clean water in a jam jar and two brushes, one medium and one fine for the detail. Have a piece of kitchen towel handy to dab the picture if you make a mistake and also to dry your brushes. If you don't have any, toilet paper is a good alternative. I understand there's a fair bit stashed away in our homes at the moment. Finally, a pencil to lightly sketch your flowers. For the spring flower, I've chosen a narcissus, but a daffodil would be a good alternative. As a background for the white flower, I have a leaf from the cuckoo pine plant and one long narcissus leaf, all in a pretty pewter vase. Now I'm going to start by drawing the flower with a pencil. You don't always have to do this, but if you're a beginner, it helps to have some kind of form with which you use the colours. So I regard this as a clock and I'm going to start at what I think is about 11 o'clock and I will be moving that round and then coming in with the next petal at about half past one I think. I, if you regard that as a clock face it helps you to see where the petals come in and out. So I'm going to draw that now. So when drawing this flower I would start with the central circle which is slightly crinkly and then you look at where the petals come as if it were a clock face. So if that is 12 o'clock and that is 6 o'clock it gives you some idea of where the petals come in. So this I would say was probably coming in at 11 o'clock and then you've got the next one coming out at one o'clock, going in at three. So that just helps you um, see where the petals are meant to be. And they do overlap quite a bit, but you just need to look really hard. And one little tip is when you're drawing that you look and you draw. You look and you draw. And then just to look at the shape of this leaf behind the whole thing, it is like an upside down heart. So you've got the one bulge here going up to a point coming down here and then you've got the second bulge there. I have actually put in the the vase as well you don't have to do that um, it's less forgiving um, and then I've also just put in the leaf of the narcissus. So now we're going to start the, the colour and we're going to start with the um, Lords and Ladies leaf which is the, the green leaf that is the background for the flower. Now what I would start doing is actually um, putting just plain water on. Um, this is because you are going to drop the colour in in a minute but you will get more flowing happening. It'll be less um, less likely to have harsh lines or what we call cauliflowers where there's a sort of backflow of the colour. So I'm filling in here roughly. Um, I'm 
keen to get um, going, going right in there, these are the bits where if you get colour right into that little bit, it, it defines the flower a bit more and, and makes it more believable. So here I go, nearly there with the water. Um, and then I'm going to mix up green. Now actually, that's quite bright. I might turn it down just a tiny bit with another green, just because it's quite That's it. And then I'm going to just drop it in and, and move it around a little bit, getting it into those sort of spaces. And because I'm not I'm not relying on brush strokes to make the marks, the watercolours have a sort of creativity all of their own um, and will give you um, not a uniform green at all. It will sink into the ridges of the paper. Um, even if you have um, smooth paper, you will get a certain amount of variation in, in colour, which is so pleasing um, and can surprise the artist and brings that sort of sense of creativity. Now, you can see I'm nearly nearly finished. I'm not going to be too fussy about the central part. For example, I've left that white, left that white. Um, it's quite clear where the petals are. It's quite clear where the edge of the leaf are. Those are the important things. You can also just gently move the colour around a little bit, again just to get that difference in shading and just a sense of 3D really. But now I have to be really patient and just leave it alone just to dry off a little bit, go and find something else to do. Now it's dried you can see the variations in the green of the leaf which is quite pleasing. Now we're going to tackle three things next. I see the flower. We're going to do the, the outside, dare I say, corona of the centre of the flower in red. We're going to do the uh, remains of the bud sheath, which is a sort of beige colour. And we're also going just to do the, the vase. Now these three things do not butt up against each other, so it's they won't run into each other. So we're going to take the advantage of doing that now. For the Corona, I have done a little bit of crimson, a little bit of orange, and I've got that nice strong red. And I'm going to, with my delicate brush, going to just do the outside there. Wish it was a little stronger. So I just you can see just by touching it, it fills up all the way around. That's really all I need to do, but I do let, need to let it dry thoroughly. The next thing is the the sheath of the bud, and that's just this upper part of the stem. It's quite a light colour. Um, and it will actually dry quite a bit paler than that. I'm just going to leave it at that. And finally, I'm going to use my thicker brush to do the um, sort of darker pewter vase there. So I'm going to use this here and I'm looking at the outside of the, the vase and then it comes down like that and then there's a little bit of a gap where you see the white reflection. I think it's reflecting my 
palette there. There's a little bit of white higher up and then just to, to bring it down like that. And then I'm going to do the handle. So I'm going to leave the edge of that free but just do the inner part of the handle just there. And then I'm going to load up the brush again and I'm going to do this part here. I don't want quite so much on the brush and I don't actually want to touch the bit I've just done there but this is darker you can see behind there this part here is darker so there we go and then just that little bit there the at the back of the the vase so now the red the beige and the gray have all dried so there's no risk of them bleeding into um, other colors that are going to be laid down and it means that i can do the petals the remaining green and the center of the flower now if we look at the flower itself that means that's yellow with a few extra little blobs in i'm going to leave the white bits of the flower really white but you can see there is a sort of gray shading which gives the petals depth so we're going to do that and the contrast between that and the white will um, stand out quite a bit i think i'm going to start actually with the uh, the grey and I'm using a quite a dilute grey here. I don't want it particularly strong and I look and I see that actually we've got we've got a grey there where there's an overlap. Um, there's a, also a sort of grey coming down like that. Um, we've got up here as well we've got a sort of line going up there and then a little bit of sort of shaping there and this one out to here we've got the, the shade that's happening here not quite strong enough there we go and then you can actually see the line like that but it's very gentle and then we've got a little bit of that gray at the end there coming to the end and a further bit just there it just gives it a sort of curvy feel. Last two petals. So we've got this. Sorry. And we've got that long line right down to the bottom. And finally, that last little petal, or perhaps it's the biggest petal. There we go. And it's got a little bit of shaping near the top there and over towards there as well. So we're just going to let that dry. It will dry fainter. I'm then going to go back to the, the little brush because I want a bit more precision. And I'm going to take some yellow that I mixed earlier. I warmed it up a little bit with a tiny bit of orange because it wasn't quite a sort of stark yellow as um, I really wanted. So I'm just going to fill in the, the middle here and just leave it like that and see how that dries. And then finally we've got the last bit of green to do. So I pull down the stalk of the narcissus here and just behind it you've got the stalk of the lords and ladies leaf. And finally we've got the We've got the long leaf of the Narcissus, which I just stroke upwards like that. And there is our picture. Just needs to dry now. So this simple spring flower can be a great springboard to enjoying watercolours.